Our programs offer many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule. Nos programs offer plusieurs langues. Veuillez visiter suprememastertv.com barre oblique schedule. Nuestros programas ofrecen varios idiomas. Visiten suprememastertv.com barra inclinada schedule. Mano nitrudut oven hiller kartak dashle kayak suprememastertv.com dashle dora schedule. Only the life review I had was that I suffered all the pain that I gave away in my entire life, each individual incident of it in a sequence, but I didn't see it from the outside. Heaven is beautiful. Near-death experiences of Reverend Peter Panagor, Part One of Four. Continue watching to find out more. Guten Tag, Grüß Gott, means good day and God bless you in German. I'm Henry. The people of Germany thank you for all the acts of kindness you perform for those around you helping to create heaven on earth. Welcome to part one of four of our series. Heaven is Beautiful, Near-Death Experiences of Reverend Peter Panagor. Reverend Peter Panagor is an internationally renowned church pastor, inspirational speaker and devotional storyteller, who has written several books including the best-selling Heaven is Beautiful, How Dying Taught Me That Death is Just the Beginning. As a former pastor of the First Radio Parish Church of America, his uplifting program Daily Devotions was broadcast every day for 15 years with 30 million views annually. Throughout his life, Reverend Panagor has had two near-death experiences or NDEs. In our series, Reverend Panagor shares what he experienced when he seemingly died and how these remarkable events transformed his life. He begins by telling us about his first NDE. In 1980 I was ice climbing in Banff Provincial Park, which is in western Canada, my partner Tim. And I made a mistake in my equipment, which slowed our climb down and put us in danger. We reached the top of the climb by sunset when all the other teams had descended. We fought our way through the night with hypothermia and frostbite to get to the last rappel sometime before dawn. And hypothermia advanced to the stage of falling asleep. And that's the end game. I was clipped into the mountain, we were off the ice on the rock, and I began to fall asleep. And when I would fall asleep, I would collapse and strike the rock and wake up. And I pulled myself up this one time, and as I stood up, my peripheral vision became like a, a fade to black on a stage in the theater where the spotlight is wide across the stage and narrows down very rapidly to a singular point of blackness. And suddenly I felt myself collapse, as I uh, thought I had done before when I was falling asleep. Only this time my consciousness remained intact, 
and my brain didn't shut off with sleep. And I wondered to myself, what's going on here? I, I'm experiencing something I never experienced before. And the darkness suddenly expanded in front of me to infinite size. Everything I say is in metaphor. It's very difficult to put into language. I saw a little tiny spot of light come rushing toward me and expanding it to fill my entire vision, only it wasn't light like a photon. It was an intelligence beyond my capacity for understanding, and it communicated to me telepathically, I'm taking you. And I said, no, you're not. And it took me against my will and carried me. And I was not afraid. I was in a place of comfort. And I was being carried by this entity that was um, projecting comfort into me. And the next thing I knew, I was popped out or into uh, an eternal-sized, greater, illuminated darkness. And I was a singular orb of consciousness that was all of my senses, my smell, taste, touch, hearing, thoughts were all one thing and I was much larger than I am as a human being and the first thing I realized was this is who I am now I remember how could I have forgotten this is what I am and I could see in every direction at once and I could see nothing it was eternal illuminated darkness but I was unafraid I'm in a place of all time and no time and a, a portal a doorway a an opening appeared in front of me and I could see through this translucent and transparent flow of a shimmer of a doorway. I could see this elongated eternal tunnel and I reached out with my soul self and I touched the surface area of this translucent and transparent flow and it was all all life, all living, all being, all loving, all eternity. It was, it was all energy, and it flowed into me. And, and when it flowed into me, I heard my soul name called. And not Peter at all, but the, the name that created my very essence of my being and Simultaneously, I saw myself as this elongated, everlasting soul that had a, an origin um, that I was spoken into being. The name I heard was unspeakable and no tongue. I can't say it. I just knew that, that when the word was spoken, that I was, that I was created into all beingness. It's like I could see a singular photon, and, and I was that photon, and it was um, wave and particle simultaneously. It was part of the entity of all beingness and separate from it at the same time. And, and I saw the long tail of myself and my soul, and I then understood that I was utterly known, and I'd always been known, and always beloved. This is indeed a very inspirational experience. During his NDEs, Reverend Peter Panagor learned many lessons about love and why we must always treat others with kindness and compassion. I heard a voice that had no sound telepathically speak inside me saying, I love you, I made you, I know you, nothing of you is hidden from me. And then I saw my life review. Only, only the life review I had was that I suffered all the pain that I gave away in my entire life, each individual incident of it in a sequence, but I didn't see it from the outside. I watched it from the perspective and felt the feeling of the individuals to whom I caused the pain. Only the little bit of pain that I thought that I caused was actually 10,000 times magnified what I had imagined that I had given them in the circumstance that I had done it, only I hadn't really given it to them, I'd given it to myself. Self, and that there was no distance between the one who I caused to suffer and the suffering that I experienced. And it was all of the pain that was 
intentional and all of the pain that was unintentional in my life. I felt all of this suffering, but meanwhile, the voice was saying to me, I know you, I love you, I've always known you, I've always loved you, you are my creature, I am creator, I made you, I love you as you are, and the pain that you caused is not your fault. It's because you were made a creature. And I could see all humanity's suffering that they caused to everyone. The result of being born into the world is the capacity for love and the capacity to cause pain. And those two coexist. And it seemed to me that I carried all this pain with me, but the thing that I carried with me most of all was all the love that I'd given away in my life and all the love that had been given to me in my life. And, and the, the love itself became the treasure of my being, which caused me to understand the divine power of love. This deeper understanding about the divine power of love transformed the Reverend Panagore, causing him to redirect his career. During his NDE, he also learned another important lesson. As it seems like every action that I took in my life was recorded, some people call it the, the book of life, every action that I took in my entire life was recorded, was known, utterly, absolutely known. And the pain that I caused other people in my life, I carried with me back into heaven. It was a weight upon me. And only through the divine period of fire of love was I relieved or cleansed of that which I did not need to carry with me. And I describe it in my book as hell. Now I think of it in terms of um, the Catholic language of purgatory. In order to be filled with the oneness of being, I had to abandon my own concept of self. And the, what gave me the strength to endure that was the love that was given to me. Love turns out to be the absolute universal treasure of life. It's the inbuilt thing inside all humanity that allows us access to the divine. It was the purity of love that saved me. And maybe that's Jesus came and he talked about love thy neighbor as thyself. He was talking about the power of the divine, of love. Many thanks, Reverend Panagore, for sharing your fascinating experiences. We look forward to hearing more from you in the future episodes. Inspiring viewers, thank you for your company today. Please join us again on Saturday, July 4, for part 2 of Heaven is Beautiful, Near-Death Experiences of Reverend Peter Panagore. Coming up next is Ananda Dara Yoga Village, helping people attain bliss part 2 or 3, right after noteworthy news. Through the immense grace of the Divine, may all beings be safe, may all beings be happy, may all beings be loved. Our programs offer many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule and suprememastertv.com forward slash ss.